Well, bless the name of the Lord, everybody. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. It is a wonderful day. We thank God for this blessed privilege, blessed opportunity to come and to be with you today as we realize and we recognize that the Lord is blessing us right now. Amen. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Come on, clap those hands, everybody, everybody. Amen. When praises go up, blessings shall surely come down. We bless the name of the Lord today. The Lord is blessing me right now. Lord, right now. I said the Lord Sing that with me. He is blessing me right now. Lord, right now. For he woke me up early this morning and he started me on my way. Oh, the Lord. Come on. He is blessing me. Lift those hands. Right now, Lord, right now, I say the Lord, come on, he is blessing me, right now, oh, right now, I say the Lord, he is blessing me, oh, right now, Lord, right now. This is what he did, in case you don't know. He woke you up early this morning and he started you on your way. I said the Lord, hallelujah, come on. He is blessing me, hey, right now. Come on, clap those hands. Everybody, come on, give God praise. It's a wonderful day, amen. It's a terrific day tantalizing testimony of Tuesday morning here at Simply The Word Church. Amen. Amen. We are a church without walls. We are a global community of prayer warriors. And we're making a mighty impact on this whole wide nation. We have been doing so, by the way, for nine plus years. Amen. Nine plus years. Pre-pandemic. Do you hear me? Pre-pandemic. Amen. The pandemic didn't put us here. Come on. God did. Amen. We're grateful to him. We give him glory, honor, and praise today. We're thankful for all of you who are assembled in this place by way of radio broadcast, live in living color, by way of Facebook Live. We are Facebook Live right now. Praise God. And we are, as always, um, live by way of our prayer line. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. And uh, for you that are on Facebook and the radio, uh, um, YouTube, rather, right now, um, you need to be sure you have the prayer line number and passcode. You need to have that because <clears throat> there may come a time when we're not live on Facebook as we were Friday. That's a good example. This past Friday, uh, we were not live on Facebook or YouTube. But we're always live on, on the prayer line. So you need to get that. Amen. You need to get that. And uh, uh, some of you all are like me. You've memorized the number in the passcode. Amen. By now. Uh, so amen. It just, amen. You can just quote that in your sleep. Somebody wake you up 2 in the morning and say, what's, what's the prayer line number? <laughs> amen. Amen. You wake up, you tell it. Amen. What's the passcode? <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you all across this nation. We have several people assembled in this place from across this nation this world in this country we are so grateful for you we thank you and thank you so much i want to say this as well while i'm thinking about it thank you thank you thank you so much for supporting our 12 o'clock noonday 60 second national prayer call uh since the month of march we've been doing that and many of you most of you um have been supporting that every day day in day out thank you so very much thank you so very much. Amen. If you're in the house by way of Facebook, let us know you're here. Brother Kenny Terrell, bless you, man. Keep on beating them drums, man. Keep on singing for the Lord. Brother Kenny Terrell, thank you, man. Thank you, Sister Paula Reed. God bless you for being here uh, and so many others. 
uh, that are alive. Listen, we're getting ready to pray and we're getting ready to go into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Those are the two chief things that we do in this church. We do more than that, but those are the two chief things that we do in this church. Pray and teach the word. Amen. Amen. That's why this ministry, this church is called God gave birth to this church and God named it simply the word. We teach the word in a very simplistic fashion. Uh, we believe that uh, the word of God is simple. Amen. Write that down. The word of God is simple. It's simple. Amen. There's nothing complicated about the word. Even the book of Revelation. I know y'all afraid of that book. Y'all <laughs> don't look at me funny. Y'all, y'all, amen. Old folks say y'all scared of that book, ain't you? Y'all <laughs> scared of Revelation. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, y'all don't want to touch that book. Amen. <laughs> but it's nothing to tell your neighbor. It's nothing to be afraid of. Amen. <laughs> it's nothing to be afraid of. The word of God is simple. Uh, we must pray for um, understanding. Amen. We must pray for understanding, wisdom, knowledge, to be able to apply the word of God, to be able to understand. And uh, and God has designed it so that we might make application of his divine word. In other words, uh, the, the, the words uh, should be able to, to literally jump off the page into your life. Come on, talk to me that you might make application. Somebody say that word, application of the word of God. God bless you, Sister Carolyn Caldwell in the house, Sister Vicki Patterson, Sister Carolyn DeBose um, in the house. Uh, 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 amen. Our administrator down in New Orleans and so many other Sister Barb in the house. Amen. Praise God. These are Facebook people that I can see. Alive and in living color. Praise God. Amen. We're getting ready to pray. Praise God. You that in your home, I would that you would get out of the kitchen. Uh, put that skillet down. I know you're getting ready to fry them eggs and all that. Um, <laughs> get them get them grits going and pancakes. My, I, I have not had breakfast this morning. So uh, let me stop talking about food because I'm, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. <laughs> I am on assignment uh, this morning, been on assignment uh, early this morning since about 6 o'clock, uh, amen, doing the work of ministry, amen, amen, it, 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 listen, listen, hey, there are sacrifices involved with this now, there are many sacrifices, you got to be willing, come on, you have to be willing, amen, amen, got to get out of your comfort zone, praise God, amen. So you that are in your home, get out of your room, your bedroom there. Uh, praise God. Get out of your comfort zone. Get into your private place where you can study and you can hear the word of God and, and become engaged in the teaching of the word of God. Amen. My sister Sharon Davis, Dallas, Texas, is in the house. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed in reverence unto God our Father. Amen. Bow your heads at this time and close your eyes. Eternal God our Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise honor and glory and we magnify thine holy name and God you're so worthy of all the praise and the honor and the glory God we thank you for our last night lying down giving your angels charge over our bodies and our homes and, and our minds and our families and God today this morning some way somehow by your spirit you woke us up oh God you breathe the breath of life into us God and now we find ourselves in worship God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come together uh, as, as one body of Christ. And God, now as we go into thy word, we pray that you will go with us. Lead us, guide us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Help us to understand your word and apply your word into our daily lives. God, we pray that you will forgive us for our sins, for we know that we've sinned against your will. We've fallen short of your glory. But God, by your grace, you just keep on blessing us. And God, we thank you for it. Even when we don't deserve, you keep on blessing. God, we say thank you. We pray for those who are sick and afflicted, those who are lying in hospitals, nursing homes. God, touch now, heal, if it be your will. Heal now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, look upon those who have tested positive with COVID-19. Touch now, God. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch families and 
homes, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up Pastor Roy Miller now, God, that you would touch him in his body, that you would heal him in the name of Jesus. We lift up Dr. Menard Mitchell there in Mendenhall, Mississippi. God, touch now in Jesus' name. Heal, set free, and deliver. We lift up Pastor Michael Otkin, God, that there at the Sherman Church in Mississippi. God, touch in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Lift up Dr. J.L. Franklin in Lake Charles. God, touch, Lord. Heal. Heal, God. Set free. God, touch in the name of Jesus. Look upon Brother James Brooks in Columbus, Georgia. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. God, touch Brother uh, in his hollands now, God, in his body. Touch his mind. Heal him, I pray. We know you have healing in your hands. God, look upon Brother Major King now. In the name of Jesus, as he's lying in the hospital. God, touch him. Touch him, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. Come on. Shout it with a loud voice. Shout it. Shout amen. When you shout amen to make the devil mad, you know, you want to. Some of y'all don't want to make the devil mad. Y'all want to play pity pack with the devil. Come on, amen. I ain't got time to play pity pat with the devil. Come on, talk to me. Hey, I'm ready to make him mad. I'm ready to stomp on his head. Come on, talk to me. Amen. I'm ready to take him out back behind the house in the shed and beat him down. Y'all don't like the preacher. Ah! Woo. Oh, have mercy. We be too nice to the devil. <laughs> the devil walk, devil knock on your door. Matter of fact, devil don't knock. Devil just walk in. Amen. Come here un uninvited. Amen. Don't give advance. No, just come. Amen. Sister Miranda Ford, bless you, baby. Bless you. Good to see you in the house. Thank you for your support, too, Sister Miranda. I'll be seeing you uh, supporting our ministry. We really appreciate you. Amen. That's my good friend from way back, former co-worker. Praise God. Sister Jennifer, amen. Houston, Texas. God bless you. We're going to go into the word of the Lord. This is part seven, believe it or not. Write that down. Part seven. <laughs> As I said on last week, I believe we're breaking a record with this series of teaching. I believe, Sister Carolyn would have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe with this part seven, we are at least matching the record, if not breaking it. Amen. With this part seven of this particular series here entitled Giving Thanks in the Midst of Adversity. All right giving thanks. Write that down in the midst of it. Raise your hand if you've ever been through anything. Come on. Raise your hand if you're going through something right now. <laughs> that ought to be everybody's hand going up. <laughs> everybody's hand ought to be going up now. Amen. Amen. Because because all of us are going through uh, the global pandemic of the coronavirus, the COVID-19. And so that is, that is our main focus because it's affecting everybody. Now, 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 truth be told, all of us are going through other things on an individual basis, but collectively, we're all going through that one thing. We're all, I'll tell you another thing we're all going through, racial disparity, racial tension, come on, systemic racism, we're going through it, hatred, come on, good God Almighty, amen, folk, folk not liking other people just because of the color of their skin, and come on. That's not God. Mm. God ain't no way in that. <laughs> Tell your neighbor God ain't in that. <laughs> Amen. Just because you don't like me, that mean I can't, I don't, just because you don't look like me, that mean I, I don't like you. Come on, oh, that ain't God. Come on. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. I wish I had a church. We're going to move on into our lesson. This is part seven. And we're going to offer... Uh, in the onset of this particular part here, part seven, we want to offer a major bullet point, our, face, our first major bullet point as we have been uh, dealing with um, reasons why we should be grateful to God in everything, reasons why we should be thankful to God uh, in everything. And I want to say, uh, uh, amen, uh, first of all, we need to talk about this and write this down. Thanksgiving, 
uh, focuses our attention on God rather, uh, rather than our circumstance. Write that down. Thanksgiving focuses our attention on God rather than our circumstance. Amen. It behooves us. That's kind of a big word there. I threw that in there. I, I know a couple of big words. I don't know too many. And <laughs> it behooves it behooves us to maintain our focus on God rather than our circumstance. Amen. The enemy the enemy would have us to focus on what we're going through as opposed to focusing on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, when your money is funny and your change is strange, the enemy wants you to focus on the fact that you ain't got none. Come on. He, he wants you, the enemy wants you to become all worried and and uh, and, and full of anxiety and fear. Uh, amen. Simply because your money is getting low. But, 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 but the Lord would have us to focus on him. Come on. The Lord would have us to continue to do his will. Come on, talk to me. Regardless of our situation that we are dealing with. Come on, talk to me, somebody. The enemy would have, oh my God. Listen, and I've told y'all this before. Uh, I, I, I pray you agree with me. Uh, 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 a lot of times, things do not turn out the way we want them to. Oft times, they, amen, it's like that. Oft times it's that way. And the enemy would have us to shift our focus away from God and on to our circumstances. And so we ought not fix our eyes on our difficulty. Amen. Because what that does is it causes our pain to become unbearable. I hope you're taking good notes. It causes our pain to become unbearable. Amen. And the peace of God immediately leaves us. Ugh. Amen. The peace you once had, the peace you once experienced, you no longer experience that peace. Why? Because now you're focused on your situation. Now you're focused on Dr. Fauci. Now you're focused on President Trump. You're focused on the CDC. You're focused on the FDA. You focus on all of this other stuff and all these other people instead of maintaining a consistent focus on God and the things of God and the promises of God. Come on, talk to me. The Reverend Dr. Oliver Houston, my preacher, um, he was associate minister of my church, the McEwen church. He's gone on to be with the Lord. Such a sweet spirit of a man. Um, I loved him dearly. And um, one message he preached, um, he would preach quite often. Um, one message he preached stuck with me. One, one, one sermon he preached one Sunday. It, it stu it, you, know, you know how some sermon, some message... It just some teachings just stick with you. Come on, tell your neighbor just stick with you. Write it down. Some stuff stick with you, amen. And you can't you can't seem to shake it. Even if you tried to shake it, you would be unsuccessful. Come on. And he preached a sermon one Sunday morning. Blew my mind. The sermon was entitled "I'm Standing on the Promises and Not on the Premises." I'm standing on the promises, Sister Nicole West, uh, Washington. <laughs> you throw that in there. Amen. I'm, I'm standing on the promises and not on the premises. Are y'all with me? What is that saying? It's saying that we as uh, uh, Christians, we as people of God, we as believers in Christ, we should, we should stand on what God has said. The Lord said he would never leave. Mm. Write this down. It's going to really help you. God is not like man. Write it down. Come on now. Come on. Write that down. Somebody say, why should I write that? Just do it. <laughs> Take my word for it. Do it. Come on. Write that down. God is not like man. 
Hello? Man make broken promises, don't he? All the time. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all ain't helping to preach you. I'm trying to get you out of here early today. Come on. Hello, somebody. God is not like man. Man will tell you stuff, man. <laughs> and we all have done it. Y'all don't, don't start me right there now. Don't y'all do me like that. Y'all make me work too hard. Don't do that. We all have said something we didn't that we didn't follow through with. Come you too. Me too. Me, both my hands are raised. <laughs> Whether it was intentional or unintentional, you didn't follow through. But I, one thing I know, if God said it, that settles it. Write it down. If God says it, that settles it. If God says it, write it down. That settles it. That is the end of the story. You can close the book. Come on. Write a letter home. Send a postcard. Tell him it's a done deal. Ah! Whew. Lord have mercy. You can tell your neighbor you can bank on it. Amen. Amen. And I know y'all not gambling people, but if you're a gambling person, You'll be able to put your last dime on the baby. If God says it, baby, that's it. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but there have been instances in my life whereas man has told me one thing, then God says something else. And, and by me standing on the promise of God, I was able to experience the fruitfulness of I'm trying to move on. Lord knows I am. Lord knows I am. I'm trying. I'm trying. But so, so brothers and sisters, <clears throat> if we lose our focus, if we focus on the circumstance instead of focusing on God, uh, it tends to make our situation seem hopeless. Y'all with me? Hopeless. Amen. Hopeless. And, and and hope hope is something that a child of God should always have if you lo if you lose your hope hmm, you might as well go on to the house and hang it up you, you got to keep listen you got to maintain your hope you got to keep the hope that God has given you there is hope in God hmm. write that down I'm trying I'm trying to rush through this there's hope in God amen but when we give thanks to God, we're talking about giving thanks in the midst of adversity. When we give thanks to God, it shifts our focus to God. We tend to forget about it. I said, you ever, Sunday morning, you ever, you ever woke up on a Sunday morning feeling bad? Shoulder was hurting, and your leg hurting or something, got pain in your knees or whatever. And, and, and you know what? And you, you commit in your spirit saying, you know what? I'm going to church this morning. I'm going to give God praise. The enemy was whispering in your ear, say, don't get up out of the bed. You're hurting too bad. Just lay here, take some pain pills, and, and try to get better. But you said, no, the devil is a lie. I'm pressing my way to the church because I know Reb got a word for me. I know the choir's going to sing, oh, my sing out of their soul. I know the deacon's going to pray like crazy. I know God got some. I know God got a miracle waiting, a breakthrough, a blessing. I'm going to press my, have you ever been there? I've been there before. Amen. And you press your way. And, and before you knew it, you forgot all about your trouble. You forgot that your shoulder was hurting. You forgot your pain in your knee. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. And even if you ain't got nothing to put in the offering tray, go to church anyway. That's just an excuse. <laughs> Don't get me talking about them excuses, man. People can come up with, oh, no, let me get off of that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But Thanksgiving tends to help us to shift our focus to God. And it reminds us of what we know God has told us. All right? It reminds us of what we know God has told us. All right? Here are the sub-bullets to that. We're going to talk. We're going to break those down. 
These are the things that God has told us. Number one, we're not alone. Write it down. Never alone. Come on, write that down. We're not alone. God is with us. That's that's the first that's the first sub bullet to that. Things that we know God has already told us. Because now we know it reminds us of those things because now we're shifting our focus to God. And we're maintaining and we're steadfast. We're unmovable, Paul said, always abounding in the th in the things of God. Amen. We're stationary. Come on. We're stable in God. Amen. Don't don't let your don't let your faith waver. You know, as we talked about the other day, a double man, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Tossed to and fro like the waves of the sea. So so don't let your faith your faith waver like the waves of the sea back and forth. One day you believe in God for a miracle. The next day, or maybe perhaps the same day, a little bit later, the same day sometime. Now you don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, well, baby, how you how you doing? Everything, look, how your grandbaby doing? I heard he had to go back to court. Uh, your grandbaby had to go back to court. Uh, 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 tomorrow, y'all got to gotta go back down there with him, huh? What, how, what the judge saying? What the lawyer saying? Come on. Amen. And, and and then your response, I don't know. It ain't looking good. Well, he's all, you're already defeated. <laughs> it might well, you might well stay at home. No sense going in there hey, to the downtown, to the courthouse, fighting the traffic, trying to find a parking space. Come on, talk to me. Putting money in the meters, going to run out. Come on, you're going to get a ticket. <laughs> you ain't got no faith. Stay at the house. Y'all don't like me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We got to understand that God is always with us. Don't care what's going on. He's with us. He never leaves us. Amen. So that's the first sub, sub bullet there. Number two, he loves us. We don't talk about the love of God enough. We don't talk about the love of God enough. We should always be reminded of the love of God. The Bible says that God is love. Whew. So Shirley Knight and God is love. God is love. And so if you have no love, you have no God. Mm -hmm. Ah. Ah. If you have no love, you have no God. God is love. Write it down. He loves us. Amen. He loves us. How can you say you love God whom you've never seen? Yet you hate your brother. You see him every day. Come on. Somebody say, somebody say, I don't hate him. I just don't like him. <laughs> what's the difference? You tell me what's the difference. <laughs> I just can't deal with him no more. I don't hate him. Cause you know how y'all talk. Y'all, y'all church folk. You know how y'all talk. I ain't it ain't that. It ain't that I don't hate him. You know, he just said, he did me wrong uh, when we was teenagers. And I ain't never get over it. So, I, I, come on, man. Y'all, come on, y'all. Y'all got to work with me now. Amen. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, let's go now. Let's go. We going, we moving on. Amen. Number three. First, first of all, we know that that we're not, we're not alone. That means God is with us. That's number one. Number two, that he loves us. God loves us because God is love. Third sub bullet to that, we know that we are eternally secure. Now that's saying something. Eternally secure. Somebody say, what does that mean? Eternally secure. That eternal, that word eternally come from the root word eternal mean, mean forever. Amen forever you're secure in God mm. come on you're secure in God somebody lift your hand and say I'm secure in God I'm secure in him I don't have to worry about nothing he got me somebody say God got me <laughs> amen somebody say God got me come on amen come on next up bullet the Lord walks with us not, not that. Not now. You, you might say, well, that, well, you just told us that he's with us. Well, that's two different things. 
God being with you, write this down, God being with you and God walking with you is two different things. Because by virtue of the fact we say God's walking with you, it means that now there is movement taking place. Good God Almighty. Now there's movement. Come on. So God is not just with us. God walks with us. God takes us places. Come on. Oh, man. Y'all got to get this, man. It's some good stuff. It's some good stuff. Not, not because I'm teaching it. That don't make it good. It's just good. I don't care who's teaching it. Dr. J.J. Mitchell could be teaching it. It's still going to be good. <laughs> hey, good morning, Dr. J.J. Mitchell. I had to call your name, brother. Love you, man. Don't matter who's teaching it. It's still good. The Lord walks with us. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Y'all remember that? That's an old one now. I'm taking you way back. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, oh Lord. While I'm on this. Woo. Jesus journey, oh yeah, I want Jesus, hallelujah, to walk with me, <laughs> be my friend, Lord, hey, hey, be my friend, how many want the Lord to be your friend, be my friend, Lord, be my friend, Sister Willie Mae Houston. She could sing that song. Lord have mercy. Where you at, Sister Willie? Oh, <laughs> while I'm on this, woo, to the journey, oh Lord, I want Jesus. <laughs> I want Jesus. Even when man stopped walking with me. I want Jesus. Even when man walks out the door and leave me by myself. I want Jesus. To walk. Walk. <laughs> walk with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Bless his name. So we know that God walks with us. Okay, And as we just said, that's different from him being with us. Walking with us by virtue of it. God's walking with us indicates or strongly suggests rather that there is movement taking place. We must be led by God. If God is walking with you, 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 you must allow him to carry you. Write that down. Y'all remember that poem, Footprints in the Sand? Y'all remember that? Footprints in the Sand. And I, 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 I'm i just, you know, I don't remember it all, but I, I remember the meaning. I remember the, the basic behind, the base uh, storyline behind it uh, is 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 that, uh, that, that he, he looked down. He saw two footprints. Then he looked down again, he saw one. And the Lord said, that's when I was carrying you. And you only saw one set of footprints because I was carrying you. Amen. So we must let the Lord carry us. Write that down. Let him carry you. Amen. When you get tired, he'll carry you. When you get weary and worn, God will carry you. God will pick you up and carry you, man. I'm so serious. I'm serious. Amen. We serve a God that will carry us. We serve a carrying God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And here's another bullet point for you. He'll bring you through. These are some things that you'll be reminded of. Now, you know we're talking about from 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 the uh, the major uh, bullet point here. Uh, some things that we will be reminded of uh, that God has already told us. See, this is nothing new. He's already told you, I'm gonna bring you through. Amen. He's already said, I'm gonna bring you through. So, so you know. So you know, even before you go into the situation, 
you know God's word. Listen, when the pandemic hit, as a child of God, we should have instantly known right then, registered in our spirit, God's going to bring us through. God's going to bring us through. And we should be constantly reminded of that every day. You ought to write that, you ought to write that in bold letters and put it on your refrigerator. Amen. Because, you know, the refrigerator is one place we look at all day. We go, me too. <laughs> sometimes we go, sometimes we go in the refrigerator and then we go back five minutes later thinking somebody has put something in there. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And it's not just kids doing that. I do it. I do it sometimes. I do it. Come on. I do it sometimes. I go in the refrigerator and then, then five minutes later, I go right back. As, as if... As, <laughs> As if something has magically appeared in five minutes. <laughs> the same stuff you saw. Come on, talk to me. Five minutes ago, Minister Reginald Seal, my cousin and my brother. The same, the same, amen, Reg. You know I'm telling the truth. The same thing you saw in that five minutes ago is in there now. Come on. And grandmama say, grandmama say, stop, stop, keep, don't keep opening my refrigerator door, letting all of the cold air out. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Let's move on in our lesson. God will bring us through. Y'all wrote it down? God will bring us through. Amen. He'll bring you through. He'll bring you out without a doubt. Woo. God will bring you through. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Next sub-bullet here. God will... Turn your experience into something profitable in your life. Ooh. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Something good shall come out of this. Something good. Shall come. I may have to preach that. I may write y'all write it down. I may have to preach that. Something good shall come out of this. Amen. You know, I told y'all last week, and the God and the Lord really, um, he kind of shocked me uh, because he had me to preach that sermon Sunday, uh, the purpose in the pandemic. I did not expect him. Uh, I had started writing it in, during the week, and I really didn't expect to preach it Sunday. Uh, but but the Lord, the Lord said, now it's time. You know, go ahead and preach it now. Amen. And so, um, uh, y'all write that down. I don't know when, I don't know where, but y'all write it down. Y'all write it down. Something good shall come out of this. Amen. And, and I'm going to go a step further. Something good is coming out of this. See, we don't have to wait till the battle is over to shout. Oof. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout now. You're going to win in the end. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout now. See, we ain't got to wait. See, we can shout now. God wants us to shout while we're going through. It's not that something good, not only, yeah, we know something good is going to come out of it, but something good is coming out of this right now. I believe that, I believe that so many souls have been saved in the midst of this pandemic already. I believe folk have given their lives to God. And begun to serve a risen Savior. I believe that. In the midst of this pandemic. I believe that the kingdom of God has been populated like crazy. I believe that. I believe that, amen, this pandemic has caused folk to say, you know what? Let me stop playing with God. Let me stop playing with him. I've been playing with God for a long Let me stop playing with him. Let me just go on and do the right thing. Amen. 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 One of the thoughts, and Dr. J.J. Mitchell is a, is a witness, I'm sure. One of the thoughts that crossed the mind of a pastor um, in the onset of this pandemic, as our governmental leaders and CDC and all of them and all of these mandates began to come down, they were saying, no large gatherings. Okay, they shut the church down. Now, I say this, now, no, no, we don't get all spiritual. Now, y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. I know, I know we're the church. I'm talking about the church building. They told us don't go in the church building until they try to figure this thing out, uh, shut it down, go virtual, 
uh, amen, do all that, do conference line, do Facebook, do YouTube, do radio, do all that instead of actually going into the building. Y'all know what I mean. And one of the things that crossed our mind in a huge way as a pastor is this simple thing. Is giving going to decrease? Are, folk, are the people of God going to stop giving because they are not in the building? Now, truth be told, some have. Some have. But as I have been um, talking to pastors and, and me myself being a pastor, and I can testify, amen, that the finances uh, have not really suffered largely. Uh, they have not largely suffered. It, it, amen. Now, now we can, you know, we can go further with that. Some folk, some folk ain't giving right. You know how that, that's everywhere. Amen. Some folk not, not giving right. But, but, but finances, God, one thing God's going to take care of is his church. You can bank. Now that's something you can bank on. God is going to take care of his church. Amen. He's going to do that now. God will let your job shut down before he let the church shut down. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm telling you now, I'm serious. I'm so serious. And I said all that to say is that when we began to talk about, you know, it crossed our mind and all of that, but 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 um but but truth be told, the Lord has been sustaining the church. Amen. Because because God always create a balance. Amen. Praise God. That's right, Dr. Mitchell. That's right, man. I hear you. Me too, man. Giving has gone up. And and see, God created that balance because as some people, yes, some people may not be co as consistent as, the, as they were when they were in the building over here, but then over on the other side, there were, amen, there are those who have increased their giving. Amen. In, in the midst of the pandemic. And then thirdly, there are those who were not giving at all and have said, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm getting ready now to do what the Lord told me to do. I'm going to be consistent in my tithing, in my offering giving, in my seed sowing. I'm not going to offer any excuses and all of that. Talking about I ain't got the money. Yeah, amen. I'm going to do what the Lord said do. Amen. And that's what God would do. God would turn. God would turn. That's the final sub bullet on that. God would turn our experience into something profitable in our lives. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Family time, that's one. Family time. Amen. Y'all know in the beginning, you know, we're kind of out and about now. We're kind of moving around a little bit more. Uh, but, but, but at, you know, when we was in phase one, um, you know, nationwide type situation, uh, a, a man, uh, we were spending more time at home with with our families, you know, and and that type thing, and so uh, that that's that's a profit right there. Whereas before, you may not have had the privilege. Come on, somebody, because our lives get so busy, don't they? As one person coming in the door, another one leaving out of the door. Come on. As one person sitting down to eat, another one getting up from eating. Because <laughs> they're trying to get somewhere. Amen. And so God, God, has, God always has a plan. God always has a plan. Now, we're going to move on to our next major bullet point. As a matter of fact, it's our final major bullet point. We may be able to finish. It's 9.03. I don't know. We're going to try to press our way and finish this on chapters, uh, um, 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 part number seven here. Gratitude energizes us. Write that down. Gratitude energizes us. Now, <clears throat> there are three ways that we become energized when we give gratitude. In three areas. Three areas. Three areas we become energized uh, when we give it, when we give gratitude. Okay? When we give gratitude to God. Three ways we become energized. Number one, physically. Physically. All right? physically man i'm telling you uh, when you the more you thank god and give him praise and, and and show your gratitude to god god will will give you strength even in your physical body amen 
because that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. You 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 surprise yourself. I know me is I can speak, uh, and I know most of y'all who are listening are not operating in the in in um, the preaching uh, of the word, uh, the pulpit preaching, pulpit ministry. But I know me, for example, me. I can use myself uh, on Sundays. On Sundays, um, pastoring two churches was three. As a matter of fact, was three for years. And then down to two. Uh, that's a lot. Amen. Because you got two to three services every Sunday. And then sometimes an, an additional service or services. All right. Whereas we may be the special guests or may just show up for fellowship or whatever. What have you. Whatever the case may be. So sometimes you're talking about four or five services. Sometimes. And I know uh, uh, for a fact that God. Uh, as as I'm constantly giving thanks to God and showing gratitude for God for one thing and we ought to thank God for every interval that he brings us through amen I told, I've told y'all before if God allow you to walk to your mailbox and get the mail and make it back into your house safely you ought to tell the Lord thank you you ought to start a praise party just for that because some folk go to the mailbox and don't make it back in the house Come on, talk to me. Amen. You ought to give God glory and thanks just for that. Every interval. And the more we show gratitude to God, the more we thank God, the more God will energize us physically. Second area, emotionally. Emotionally. Amen. Emotionally. Praise God. Because when we go through pain, trouble, and disappointment, those things tend to drain us emotionally. When we go through pain, trouble, disappointment, right? Those things tend to drain us emotionally. Amen. You ain't got nothing left. But with God, all things are possible. God will give you strength and energy emotionally as you show gratitude to him. Thirdly, spiritually. Okay. Most importantly, spiritually. We need spiritual energy. Okay. Spiritual energy is different from physical and emotional energy. Amen. Because as we focus on him, uh, it tends to revitalize us spiritually. It tends us, it tends to revitalize us spiritually. Amen. Amen. And and and, and tend to renew us revitalize and renew us so that we can continue to keep going amen doing the work of the lord amen and we do i'm serious we need we need um revital revitalization spiritually as well as other areas we need it y'all we need it we need it amen because we tend we tend to become drained sometimes that's why that's why you, you, you need you, you need a constant study of God's word every day to become revitalized in the word of God and the things of God. You need a consistent prayer life every day to become revitalized and renewed in the things of God. You need that. I need that. We all need that. Amen. We all need that. Praise God. Amen. So that we can continue to keep going in the things of God. Brothers and sisters, put your hand together for this series. We have just concluded this awesome series of teaching entitled <clears throat> Giving Thanks in the Midst of Adversity. And we ought to put our hands together <clears throat> and give the Lord praise and tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so, so good. You have been so good. You've been so good 
I just want to thank. <laughs> Come on, lift those hands. I just want to thank you, Lord. You made a way. Lord, you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. I just want to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, we want to lift our offering, y'all. We want to lift our offering, praise God, by way of Cash App, our most common. By way of Cash App, it's STW Ministry. STW Ministry. Amen. We're working on text to give for simply the word. That's, that will be here soon. Whereas you can just text, um, send a text message with your smartphone very quick and give. Takes about the same time as Cash App um, there. Um, but I, but we realize that we, 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 we're getting that because we realize some folk don't have Cash App downloaded on their phone and some folk don't want it. And that's okay. That's your that's your prerogative. <laughs> Thought about Bobby Brown then. <laughs> don't look at me funny. <laughs> that's your prerogative. Amen. That's your prerogative. And so um, uh, you can do it that way. Cash App is STW Ministry. Also, Buck Glenn King is a Cash App. If the Lord leads you in that area uh, to give, uh, praise God. People of God, be consistent in your tithing and in your offering giving whenever you sit under the teaching of the word you should be prompted by the holy spirit to give first corinthian chapter 9 if you want to check that out first corinthian chapter 9 praise god paul said as i have sown unto you spiritual things you likewise now should sow uh your carnal things amen praise god so we have scripture on that the lord said bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house i want to encourage uh, all of you, um, whether you're members of, of our church or not, across this nation, support your local church uh, with your tithes and your offerings. Amen. If you have a local church, praise God. Um, uh, if you do not, you can tithe and give your offering. All you can tithe right here, simply the word church. You can do that. Amen. People are doing that. People are doing that. I want to let you know you're sowing into good ground. You're sowing into fertile ground fertile ground amen all ground write it down all ground is not good ground <laughs> all ground is not good ground amen but you're sowing into good ground praise god we are um doing the work of the lord amen praise god we are prayer warriors all across this nation this world and this country and um and amen stay tuned we're coming to we perhaps we're coming to your city your state <clears throat> we're looking to go to atlanta to the atl we were supposed to be there in May. Uh, pandemic uh, shut that down. Uh, uh, we had to press pause on that. Uh, amen. So now we're looking at uh, next year um, there being in the ATL. Uh, Washington, D.C., New York area. Look out. We're coming. Florida, we're coming. Amen. Houston, we can come back to Houston. So Amen. Uh, uh, Sister Sister Jennifer's there in Houston. We can come back to Houston. We've been there, but we can come back. Dallas, Sister Sharon, we're on the way. We've been to L.A., Los Angeles, Long Beach. We can come back there, too. <laughs> Nobody said we couldn't go back. Hey, we've been, but we can go back. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. New Orleans, we can come back. Amen. Baton Rouge, we can come back. Hammond, we can go back. Come on. Amen. We can revisit. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Whenever... Uh, this pandemic lift, we move around a little bit better, get a hold on it. Y'all continue to pray. Pray for mighty miracles and powerful breakthrough. Uh, pray, 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 pray. One of the things, the chief thing that we should be doing in this season is prayer uh, like, uh, like, like nothing else. We should be praying, praying, praying. We should be praying. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so y'all do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, 60 second national prayer call every day on the same prayer line you're on now, 12 o'clock noon central time. Uh, even today, I want you to meet me in a few hours, uh, uh, 12 o'clock. Amen. Uh, for the most part, we have a different person praying every day. Uh, amen. Amen. I only pray when the Lord leads me to pray on that, on that platform. If you hear me praying, 
if you hear me praying at 12 o'clock, it's because, and that might be once or twice a week at the most, uh, it's because the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord has led me. Uh, praise God. I believe in honoring uh, the, the and listening to the voice of God. And when the Lord say, uh, yield to someone else, that's what I do. That's what I do. Amen. Praise God. All right. Thank y'all for your support. Uh, radio station, all of that. WSOK every Sunday, 1030 till 11. Thank y'all so much for your uh, support. Amen. Uh, in in that in that area and um, as we press our way in the things of God uh, we have already lifted our offering uh, we open the door of the church now maybe somebody out there does not have a relationship with Jesus they don't leave here like that you showed up without the relationship I want you to re I want you to leave with it I want you to leave with it tell your neighbor leave with it leave with it amen Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, brothers and sisters, we, uh, we we definitely want to remember all of those uh, who are sick in the back. We we'll remember our young people. I want y'all to continue to pray for Sister Barb and Brother Richard. Brother Richard Jr. and uh, Sister Barb and uh, Brother Kadaris. Amen. Praise God as they prepare to get him off to college. Amen. Praise God. And all of our young people, uh, as we are heavily concerned about their safety and their, their, their health, their well-being, let us pray for them. Uh, let us pray for our school systems and all of them. We had an awesome uh, Zoom, East Feliciana Ministers Conference, just on last night. And I want to thank God for, for Miss Keisha Netterville. Our school superintendent, East Feliciana Parish School System, public school system. Her name is Keisha Netterville. Uh, that young lady got it together. Amen. And I don't know nothing about her. Uh, I was just acquainted with her when we scheduled to schedule the Zoom um, conversation that we had last night. Uh, amen. I've been hearing some great things about her, but we we had a great conversation with her last night. The ministers' conference, the leadership of the conference. And she's a superintendent, and she got it together. She has a, and if you're a parent out there in East Feliciana schools, I want you to know that your superintendent has a great platform. She has it together. School is getting ready to start, and the plan has been laid out. You don't have to worry. Just continue to pray, educate your child, and um, go on in Jesus' name. Go on in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We asked her a hundred questions, and she's. She stood tall and she answered those questions, <laughs> amen, and uh, with flying colors, amen, with confidence, praise God, there's not a stone that has not been unturned, she got it together, amen, so that's the way, we were very impressed and very excited about the things that she shared with us. I do want to, um, I do want to, at this time, we need to go to our administrator, praise God, if we can... Uh, do that praise the name of the Lord down in New Orleans Louisiana sister Carolyn Collins Debos come on be a blessing to us woman of God good morning good morning good morning my prayer warriors that God be the glory for the things he has done let's just thank him for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way it has been a privilege and a blessing to be found in the house of the Lord uh, just some quick reminders. We'd like to remind you that our yearly seed, our theme is better. This is the year of better. 2020 is the year of better. No matter how dim and it may look, remember, God is in complete control. And just keep your faith and trust in him and everything is going to be all right. Uh, our yearly seed is $220. You can sow that seed in various ways. I will put it back on the uh, broadcasting uh, comment section once again for you so that you have that information. We also want to ask you to think about becoming a financial member of Simply the Word Ministry with a monthly seed of $20. 
this assists us with our online uh, ministry as well as our outreach ministry and our broadcasting. We're on every Sunday morning. That information has also been given to you through the comment section. If you should need any further assistance with any information, please do not hesitate to contact myself. That's Carolyn Depot at 504-453-7995 or Pastor Renette G. King Sr., Demis Ring, Louisiana at 225-202-8431. We are here for you. We are here if you need us. Call us. If you have prayer requests, we uh, direct you to our website. You can post anything there, stwministry.web.com. I'm sorry, stwm.web.com is our online website that you can go to. Once again, you can text me if you have prayer requests, and we will also put that information up on our website as well as on this prayer line. As always, our prayer is that God will continue to bless and keep you in his loving care back into the hands of our beloved pastor, Reverend Dr. Burnett G. King Sr., Denham Springs, Louisiana. And I have posted the information once again for you in the comment section. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. God bless you, Sister Carolyn Collins, Debose, New Orleans, Louisiana, in the house, the administrator of our church, doing an awesome job. A man goes far beyond the scope of duty we just thank god for her so very much we send a shout out to the mother of our church here at simply the word uh mother christine Hollins. amen remain encouraged woman of god we're praying for you we love you we're praying for your husband brother ennis Hollins. uh there are so many that we're lifting in prayer on a continuous basis on ongoing lists praise god brother henry london uh deacon ray sister ruby uh, the list goes on and on. Sister Nelly, we love you, woman of God. Sister Bridget Lynn, praise God. Uh, the, the, the Matthews family, it's in, in its entirety. All of those, the children and all of them, little KK, little C. We're lifting all of you. Sister Angela, uh, Sister Angela Hall uh, and Brother Todd, we're lifting you all in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Brother Oscar Davis, you in the house, man. So Sharon, you he he late for church. Tell so he can't be late now. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Tell him he got to be on time for church. <laughs> got to be on time for church, man. That's my big brother, Oscar Davis. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody tell him be on time. Say be on time, bro, Oscar. <laughs> type it in. Somebody type it in. <laughs> Say be on time. Amen. Love you. Love you all. Amen. <laughs> I see you, man. Love you, man. <laughs> That's my big brother. Amen. Love you in the Lord. Hey, how many know it's good to have fun in church and laugh and have a good time? Amen. It's so that's so very important. So very important. We're getting ready to go, brothers and sisters. We are getting ready to go. We're lifting up uh Sister Emily Bailey, New Orleans. Amen. Uh praise God. Lifting up Deacon Leon Washington. Sister Carla Evans, calling out some names here. A woman of God, Linda Ward, lifting you up. Amen. In Jesus' name, Deacon Robert and Senior, uh, uh, Junior and Senior there, Washington. Amen. Praise God. Lifting you all up in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And we can say amen to that. Praise the name of of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. We're going to get ready to get out of here, you all, and let you go. want you to make it a great day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice 
and be glad in this day. Every day you wake up, you ought to tell yourself that. Every day you wake up, you say, Lord, this is the day that you've made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Love you in the Lord. Now, tomorrow, 12 high noon, uh, y'all meet me right back here, same time, same place, same station. Of course, now, don't forget today at 12, 60 second national prayer call. All right? Every day at 12. But tomorrow's a little bit different. Tomorrow's Wednesday. So we have our 60 second national prayer call. Then we'll ease right into smooth transition, right into our Bible teaching on tomorrow as well. Praise God. Amen. So bring somebody with you. Don't come by yourself now. Every car I see pull up on the. On the <laughs> every, I'm be looking out the window. I'm going to get there early. I'm going to get there early. I'm going to look out the window. Every car that pull up, I want every car to be, be full, be packed with people. Y'all bring people with you. <laughs> Amen. Just pull up. Tell them to get in. They say, where we going? I ain't going to tell you. Just get in. Amen. Praise God. Love y'all so much in the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you and we thank you for your word today. God, we give you praise and honor for your word. And we pray now, God, that we're better, we're wiser, and we're stronger because of your word. And now, God, we lift up all of your people now, all of the names that we call and even the ones we did not call. God, you made us. You know all about us, God. Bless us this day, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Bless our nation, God. Stretch out over us, God. Saturate us with your blood. In Jesus' name, look upon our president, God. Help them all, all of our governmental leaders, God, to make the right decisions for the best interest of all the people. God, we thank you. Look upon our governors and our mayors of all of our cities likewise. Look upon our families, God. Bless every marriage and every family. In Jesus' name, God, we lift up all of our pastors. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen, amen. All right. If you meet me and forget me, it's all right. But if you meet Jesus and forget him, you've missed out on what? A lifetime. And a lifetime, Pastor. Love you all. I love you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Facebook people, just type it in. Type in lifetime. Facebook. Type it in a lifetime. Type it in before you go now. I know you're on the way out the door, but type it in. A lifetime. Hallelujah. A lifetime. Glory to his name. Glory. Your line has been disconnected by the moderator. Goodbye.